States of America and into the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Um, this is the August 24th, 2021 meeting of the Metro County Board of Supervisors. Uh, we have four of us sitting here, and one of, of us is uh, on speakerphone. Steve, can you hear us? Yes, kind of. Kind of. Okay. Um, we have an agenda in front of us. Uh, any ch changes need to be done to the agenda? Hearing no changes, uh, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to make that motion. I'll yes. second that. Steve has seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, <clears throat> motion's carried. Minutes from the August 17th meeting. Uh, I'm assuming everybody's had time to look them over. Any corrections needed for the minutes? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes and claims for the last 17th meeting. Thank you, minutes and claims, thank you. Mark has made the motion, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, Todd? Aye. Mark? Aye. Mike? Aye. Steve? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay, County Attorney General discussion. Mark, are you there? Do you have anything this morning? I don't have anything unless you have some questions for me. Any questions for the attorney from the board? Okay, I guess we're good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Sheriff update. Uh, real briefly, Parker was a success. Um, had a good weekend, good turnout on Sunday for, for their parade and community worship and Meal, so I think they had a good, a good week, a weekend up there. We didn't have a lot of issues. Um, got a call yesterday, September 11th. There's a motorcycle ride that's going to come into Osage. Um, about 200 motorcycles. They're going to come up the Orchard Road and then west into um, Osage. It's a fundraiser for an individual that was hurt while riding a motorcycle. So I'll have some extra people out there. Kind of that day to handle that. So if you see a big influx, I think about 200 motorcycles. Um, that's what that's about on um, Saturday, you know, Other than that, I don't have anything uh, unless you guys have something to do. Anything for the sheriff? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, department head discussion. Anything from any department heads? I'm just going to throw this out. Who could thought I would need comments, but it's probably something we we'll maybe address more at budget time. Um, Part-time help at the sheriff's office and, and what I'm paying those folks compared to what other employees are paying part-time folks, it appears to be maybe a little bit higher. <laughs> so I need to keep them somehow, some way. Um, so maybe come January when we start looking at budgets, we can talk about that more in depth. Um, you know, worker shortages for us are as, you know, as critical yeah. as anyone else. We face it over there also. I think I'm going to lose one part-time student. He's a Riverland Community College student that we, that we hired about eight months ago to a full-time position, possibly an hour. Um, and good for him because part-time wages don't pay um, <coughs> bills. And so they come to us and we know that, that, that uh, within a year we're probably going to lose him to a, another agency if we don't have full-time positions available to them. So uh, just something to think about the next few months, and when we get into budget, we can talk about it more and, and see where we're at. Okay. How many part-time employees do you have? Well, all right, let's see. I think there's at least 10. 10? Okay. Yeah, between jail and dispatch. Okay. Yeah, and then, of course, I have some part-time guys that help us cover some shifts and special events like September 11th. Right. Um, so, yeah, they're pretty critical. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just... You know, to our organization to keep it rolling. Yeah, yeah, I just 
I'm curious how many you had. Yeah. Can I get you a more solid number? Okay. Well, I'm just, time? Yeah, that's fine. I just. But those, you know, we're asking those folks to work overnights and holidays and weekends. Right. And then that short notice, some of those things. Yep. Um, and we want to keep them because they're good people. Yep. Do their job for us, so. <clears throat> Something to think about. Everybody's kind of in the same position, whether it's private industry or for my shop. So. Yep. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, county engineer update. Rich isn't here. Is are you online, Rich? I'm online. Can you hear me? You bet. All right. Um, Sorry, I'm not there. I've got an interview at 9:30 for a week commissioner position, um, uh, so I want to make sure I get prepared for that. Um, so I think our strike, Peter strike, or highway striping is done. I haven't been able to talk to the, the contractor about it, but they've got a lot of it done in their trailers. I just think they were moving out yesterday, so I think they're done. Um, so I'll be on the bridge up on Underwood. Uh, they're supposedly driving pile this morning on the south abutment and they're forming up the north abutment um, for that. Today we are, there was an error in a, in a pipe place in there up on the uh, last avenue, I think it was, and so we're replacing that pipe with so the BK panel through that count. I think it's that happening today. Um, so once we're done with that, we're going to move on. There's a pipe to replace up on Kirkwood Avenue on the paving project. We're going to try to get that this week. Um, we, uh, we, I think that according to what Mark Walks said, maybe we'll take applications for the week commissioner yet, but I want to get some people at the, I've had a couple of people interested, but I just don't know where that, I haven't seen any other applications come in, so I'm going to in, in, in interview one person right now, you know, that turns out, um, I have recently received a two notice for an employee here, so I'm sending out a notice for employment. Got to get the paper as soon as we can. Also, so we can get the ball rolling here with this knocking on our door. And I hate to say that when it's going to be 90 degrees out, but the process takes a little bit to get the week here. So we'll be sending out a, a job notification here soon. Um, and then I'm going to get greater specs sent out this week. I haven't gotten any information on what a lead time is for motor graders, but what I've been hearing is even if we were in a, we're a dump truck, a, a dump box is uh, like 36, 38 weeks out, so it's a long time. So I don't know what the motor graders are at, but we need to get that moving. Um, working on the end report, trying to get a couple things finalized. Once I know where we're at with our balance at the end of the year, we can discuss funding for Rickery and Kirkwood as far as what we have for local dollars. Um, what I'm finding right now is we have, we have obviously we have unspent money. We, we have it every year where we spend it. Budget, but we also have some unexpected um, uh, receipts that came in so that helped out a little bit. So I'm going through that right now, and next week we'll be able to talk about. And then uh, finally, uh, I got a I got a uh, a letter from the Sarasota County Engineer. They want to review their 2080 agreement because they, they don't have one on file with us. So I'm going to look through that 2080 agreement, let you guys look at it when I'm done with it, and then. Uh, Give it back to them and they can go through the process if they want to get it recorded to the state. So, and it might be something we should probably look at with all of our other county county line agreements as well. I don't think we've had anything updated for quite some time, so this would be nice to revisit the time. Okay. That's about what I've got for you this morning. Unless you guys have any questions. Any questions for the engineer? Not right now. Not right now. On your equipment that you are mm -hmm. looking at, um, because of the out time they are that's not going to hinder any of your come winter your snow or anything is it no 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 this is just trying to keep the cycle going with our equipment um we're not short anything we just need to start upgrading equipment so okay it's just a cycle you know? rich uh did yeah. go ahead no finish go ahead we're just saying if we're thinking about and it's hard to think about trying to figure out next year's budget when we just got into this year's budget. But if we're looking for, if we're cycling dump trucks and stuff too, we probably should start looking, trying to order one because that one took over a year to get. So just don't know where that's going to, where it's going to lead. But I guess we're not, high, we're not in dire straits. We're not out of anything, but we just want to make sure we have the right amount of equipment on hand. Okay. So we're, we're good for now. We're just trying to cycle through and get newer equipment into the system. 
Did you look into the 320th uh, spraying thing that was brought up last week's meeting as far as what, if, did we spray the road or what did we do there? I did not get a chance to talk to the, to the, the spray guy. I know when we talked about it, I was out and I haven't had a chance to look at that yet. Okay, you'll follow hey. up on that then? Yep. Yes, go ahead, Steve. That was for east of Orchard, that was sprayed. It got done, okay. That got done. Okay, very good. I guess it, it's been completed, Rich, so thank you. All right. All right. Um, then one last thing. We have some landscaping blocks that got delivered over to the new building. It's on the parking lot. They couldn't, because of their forklift, they couldn't put it in the building. Would Rhodes be able okay. to bring a forklift down sometime and uh, set it inside one of the large doors? We can, yep. Um, if you use the loader, I don't want the loader in the building. I don't want to end up having it take the chance of it busting off one of the threshold uh, or cracking one of the thresholds. So just set it inside the door, but keep the unit outside if you could, please. Okay, yep, yep. And then I don't know if the if our, our tractor was working out with the with the compactors. So I don't know about that. So it'll either be the loader or the skid loader. I'm not sure if the skidder will pick them up, but the, the guys can look at it. But if you use the loader, just keep it outside and just set it in the door, please. We'll do, we'll do just inside, yep. Thank you. I think that will, yep. it's probably locked too, right? Correct. Yeah, it's, you'll have to get a hold of, uh, well, I, myself or Rachel or uh, um, Harto to, to get a key because okay. we have it locked. So but just give us somebody heads up. We can get it unlocked. Okay. Do you have it? Doesn't matter which door. Uh, we're going to try to keep the two drive-through doors open, so it would be one of the uh, one, one of the non -non doors. it'd be the okay. one of the west-facing uh, doors, not not the drive-through portions, okay. but the other ones. I got, I got this. Yeah. All right. Probably the north door would be the handiest and be closest to the okay to the where, where we're going to use them. Yep. So. Right. Okay. The north door then. North, northwest. Yep. Very good. Okay, thank you. Um, item seven, discussion and possible action on environmental health Tahoe purchase. Amanda, do you want to discuss this? Well, hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, so you guys all know me, but for anybody online who hasn't had a chance to meet me, my name is Amanda Jacobs, and I'm the new Mitchell County Environmental Health Sanitarian and the Planning and Zoning Administrator. Um, I'm here today to show interest in the 2015 Chevy Tahoe that the Sheriff's Department is retiring and selling, um, and to explain why I think it would be a benefit to both of my departments. Um, to start off, first of all, I'm currently using my personal vehicle. Um, which is not a bad thing. My vehicle is reliable. However, we don't like to hear the word winter in Iowa, but it's coming here soon. And uh, my drivetrain is not suitable for the winter. So um, with this vehicle, having four wheel drive, that's definitely gonna help um, with my departments because people do like to put septics in um, whenever they can. And sometimes that falls in the winter. People like to have their water tested. Um, so I would still be working. And I, I think it would be more beneficial to have a even better reliable vehicle with uh, a better drivetrain than what I've got. Um, second of all, I like my vehicle. However, I don't think my vehicle shows any type of professionalism when I'm on the job. Um, being able to have something that would be able to say Mitchell County on the side, I think would give my departments a more professional look. Um, every time I go to a training, that is off-site, um, not online. Every other county has a vehicle that says their county on it. It usually says environmental health or it'll say something along the lines of planning and zoning on the side. I think that would be good for my departments because not a lot of people actually realize what I offer. Um, I have questions all the time of, do you guys still do free water tests? And I have to tell them yes or, um, do I come out and test their water? Do I, you know, what do septic installs require? Like not a lot of people realize the spectrum that I can offer in my departments. It would kind of give us the ability to brand a vehicle and let people know that I am actually here and willing to work for them. 
Um, secondly, or thirdly, it's newer. This vehicle that the Sheriff's Department is retiring is newer than my personal vehicle, which means that it has the potential to have less problems. Uh, my vehicle is 14 years old, and around this time, a lot of problems start happening. Um, I've already had to re replace some things in my vehicle as it is, so um, it would be nice to have something where if something does go wrong, it can get fixed right away um, instead of, you know, me trying to shuffle out some money to try and get some stuff fixed. Um, next, I could store all of my equipment in this vehicle. I've got soil samplers, um, hopefully some GPS equipment coming here soon. Um, all of my water tests I could keep in the back of the Tahoe, my sanitizers, um, etc. It would just, I think, provide better efficiency than me walking up and down the stairs with all of these water tests in my hands. And instead, it would just be, let's walk up the stairs, let's go and just go get the water test. It would save me quite a bit of time, I think. Um, we know it came from a good home. The Sheriff's Department doesn't abuse their vehicles by any means, so I think that's a bonus. Uh, lastly, kind of, uh, I think, if I'm correct, you guys could use this as a tax deduction for the county. Um, if I keep track of mileage, um, obviously the price that was given, drive time, auto expenses, tires, gas, oil changes, etc. I believe that you guys can actually use this vehicle as a tax deduction come tax time. I may be wrong, um, but yeah, and then just in the budget, I have it in the budget to be able to purchase the vehicle, depending on the price. I guess I wasn't ever told like a set price. I guess we don't really know, but do you know? No. Okay. So yeah, I think, I mean, from talking with Rachel and some of you guys, I believe I have it in the budget to be able to use this vehicle, and I think it's going to be pretty beneficial um, to my departments. So that's pretty much all I got. I just wanted to show some interest to you guys. Um, yeah, if you have any questions. Yes. Price 12,026, I believe. Yeah, I believe that was the numbers. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I have that in the budget, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Negotiable? <laughs> <laughs> and I think also the the veterans affairs might be able to use it part time too. For yep, and that would be great. Um, if, I've kind of I mean, expressed that it would be nice if they had it on like a certain day. Correct. Um, just due to, and I would use my personal vehicle on that day that yep. they would use it, and yep. that would be fine. I would calculate my mileage that way. Yep. Um, just kind of how I've been doing, but with my schedule being so all over the place, yeah. never knowing, it would be good for them to have like a set day to use that vehicle so then I can always just plan that work around it maybe, yes exactly if possible. Yep. exactly yep. So. Jim, yes can I speak? you bet Steve go ahead uh, I have a thought on this and I don't see a problem with it going and being used by the sanitarian but I also am thinking in the future I know Rich has maybe questioned and made it Mark about maybe possibly making a change on his rig, which is a little smaller and maybe more suited to the sanitarian's needs. It's a four-wheel drive unit, of course, too. Uh, but uh, the, the Chevy Tahoe, if that's possible, I see in some of our paperwork that we received that the county home health has indicated that they would like a trailer and a vehicle and that Tahoe I think would pull a trailer so it, it could have a use over there someday but this is just something for us to think about but as of for now it could yes be used by the sanitarian and down the road maybe switched so that it goes over to home health yep. what was or shared with uh, Veterans Affairs because uh, Veterans Affairs wouldn't need it all the time 
but that's just a thought. What was the other vehicle you were talking about? I, I'm sorry, I missed that. What? Where was that one? Rich's, Rich's little rig. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. He has made a comment here. Sanitarian's rig and the Tahoe could be shared by home health and or veterans affairs. Just a thought. Yeah, we could, we could uh, get some magnetic signs as far I mean, if we did go that route and just have magnetic signs to make the transfer, but. Yes. Any yeah, thoughts? This, this is just my mouth speaking. That doesn't necessarily mean this is set in a stone in my brain. It's just something to think about. Okay. Thoughts from the board? Well, it sounds like we have a use for this vehicle between <coughs> sanitarium for now and whether it moves later. You know where it's been and it's been serviced. I think it's probably good to keep it in the county, you know. Mm -hmm. no, I think it's a good idea to pull in the yard with your own vehicle and people don't know who you are. Yeah, a lot of people yeah, question. I get a lot of funny yeah. looks because, <laughs> you know, I'm not from around the area as it is. Joe and then I pull in with a personal vehicle and people don't really know. <laughs> they they get a little bit weary, I think. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It's a lot oh, different gosh. nowadays. Than, yeah, that's what yeah. I was yes. saying. Four so, days ago. And, yeah. Today's society is, especially a lot of it's out in the country, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, yep. they've got construction people are already on their property and and some strange vehicle but so yeah i i think it's a good idea it's been it was in a good home let's keep it in a good home and is there a motion to uh, approve i would make a motion to approve i'll second that okay we have a motion we have a second any discussion i'll, I'll second that jim uh mark mark got ahead of you steve Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call. Jim? Aye. Steve? Aye. Mike? Aye. Mark? Aye. Todd? Aye. Okay. It's been carried. It's been approved. Very good. Take care of it. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> will. I promise. Don't get Thank it dirty. No. <laughs> um, before we move on to the next item, Richard, you still on the line? Yes, I am. All right. Um, so we're doing things a little bit differently this morning. We're using Rachel's phone in order to have Steve be part of the meeting. And Steve, Steve's phone is on my desk. I mean, excuse me, Rachel's phone is on my desk. And part of me? I see it. Okay. Um, as we were having the discussion this last bit here, uh, there was a member of the, sec an employee of the secondary road department that was trying to call Rachel in regards to, I don't really know why, it was at quarter to nine. Remind your guys that their job is to work in the secondary road department and not log into the live supervisor meeting, please. They were trying to call Rachel, please? There was an individual who was trying to call Rachel, and I know the name, I saw the name, I declined the call, but just remind them that their job is to work out there, not, not worry about what's going on at this meeting. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, next item, discuss and possible action on violent intruder training. Chris could not be here this morning, so I'll try and describe the best I can. Um, we had been talking earlier this year um, about Alice training, action for Alice's alert, lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. Um, the gentleman's name is Rick Bush, um, over I believe it's in Cresco. He had come here, I'm not sure if you were here, if it was 2013 or so. Um, he does a training in this room, um, and it's actually nice he's able to do an AM and PM so he can split up and we won't actually have to close down the courthouse. Um, goes through some different scenarios, and then he also goes to each office, then he can help with the scenarios that can happen in there as well. Um, his estimate, he said the training would be one and a half to two hour, the classroom training, and then the hands-on training, that's the training in each of the offices. It shouldn't take as long. Um, it'd be something he would just do after each of the trainings, kind of split it up. Um, the estimates 
of training for the day is a thousand to two thousand, um, and then he also gets paid the mileage. So he estimated I think it's a hundred and two hundred dollars. Um, and then if there's any follow-up questions after training day, he will of course answer those at no charge as well. When would he have an idea as far as um, the yes, cost it was narrow it down? October six. But as far as the cost, I mean, would he does he have an idea of how? I mean, how does he know? Does he know at the end that that what the cost is or um, what? So it is the estimate. It includes course preparation time, travel time, mileage, and then the instruction time for those two classes, and then hands-on training. Um, so I think once we. The, it's going to be estimated on how many participants you have. I see. So we would also have to figure out who's going to all participate. Okay. Um, I think Chris threw out the idea too of not only the courthouse, but then I think the sheriff's department was involved in it last time, so on, and then home health. All right. With their new setup and whatnot. Okay. Right. You said October. Sixth, and that's a Wednesday. Any questions from the board about any of it? Do you, do you know who it is? I do. I've worked with Rick for 25 years. Okay. It's quality training. It really is um, what you're going to get that day from whatever staff you choose to send. Um, it's going to open their eyes to what potentially could happen. <laughs> Not from a standpoint that the sky's falling and next week this is what's going to happen. Not that approach, but if it does, you know what can you do to survive the incident? Um, Rick's very personal, very professional. Comes from a military background, 20 some years with the Department of Public Safety. Um, plus, he has a business, privately owned security business. So, what he brings is well worth the money. Um, I can reach out to him to try and narrow down the cost. If you'd like to do get some, okay. you know, more figure on, on what it might be and if that's the whole but I think that at the end of the day if the supervisors attend department heads and, and their staff you'll all agree with money well spent I've got asset forfeiture money that could go towards this if that's you know, the hold up be happy to put it towards it there wouldn't be better use for it so we can pay for it out of one of my accounts if need be uh, to make it happen I encourage you to schedule it and, and give the staff the time to come because it's, mm -hmm. it's very important. I don't know if there's there's probably a few staff members that were through 2013, but we've got new people now that probably should be put through it. Um, didn't see a lot of that. There was active shooter issues across the country in 2020, well, 2019 and 20, but none in our schools that really made headlines because we weren't in school. Those things would probably happen again, but there was a lot of workplace violence, and Rick will uh, address that in his work. So, I want to answer to your question, but yes, I do. Okay, and, and I do want to emphasize, I'm, it wasn't the mar money part. I know no, if I'm it's uh, training well spent, I'm I'm all for it, you know. So I just wanted to. Yeah, no problem. I've got some cash. I mean, as the portrait money is for things like this. Okay. So. I was just that's curious. I was just curious of the range, also. I didn't know why. Yeah, let me so, reach out to him, and I'll I'll get a firm number for yeah. us and make a decision. And as Rachel described, you know, it depends on the number of people that sign up for it too, and I can yeah. I can understand that. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I guess if you do do it, it'd be good to, for all the department heads to attend it, right? Probably. Okay. Well, you want to take it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you'd make it mandatory. Or and it's, it's not just department heads, correct? It's and staff. And yeah, staff. And staff. staff, yes. Okay. <coughs> and say we sign up similarly like we do health, and you have two times, and you just have the department has to make sure there's always someone in the office. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No, I'll make a motion to have this guy come in. Okay, Mark's made a motion. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. Steve seconded it. Okay, any further discussion? 
Roll Good. call. Mike. Aye. Todd. Aye. Steve. Aye. Jim. Aye. Mark. Aye. Okay. Thank okay. you, Sheriff. Uh, that has been approved. The next item, approved liquor license for bouquets and rustics. Okay, so we have a liquor license request from Bouquet and Rustics. They are located at 1761 Highway 9. Uh, they're requesting a Class B native wine permit. Effective dates are October 1st of 21 to expir expiration of September 30th of 22. Any questions from the board? This, this must be something new, huh? That's a... No, I just gave you extra information. They, this is how they have to fill out online. They have to provide all this information, and then I verify all their information once you guys approve it, and then it goes back to them. I've more or less just given you what it looks like on our end. So they're doing that out there as of now. They're, this is just a this renewal. This is a new thing. Them, I believe. Okay, yep. that's okay. That's what I think Mike was. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a new, new, new liquor license. Yes, yes that's what I meant. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'll entertain any further questions, or if not, if a motion also, if if we're good with this. Yeah, this is Steve, and I'll I'll make a motion to approve the liquor license for bouquets and rustics. Okay, Steve has made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Mike has seconded it. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mark? Aye. Steve? Aye. Mike? Aye. Jim? Aye. Todd? Aye. Okay, motion is carried. Item 10, approve contract for library service for Mitchell County. Rachel, do you want to talk about this a little bit? I can give a little brief. Um, every year we have this contract with the library. Um, so it has the dates of July 1 through June 30th. Um, the item that changes on here is number 7, um, where it gives the amount that is appropriated. And we did do that at the end of June. Um, so that part's all been done. Otherwise, it just kind of gives a little bit more detail. But this is something that we sign every year with them. Nothing else changes in the contract. We put, did we pay that one in one lump sum? Uh, we do it in two. And two. so that's the lump sum between the four libraries. So that gets broken down based upon the percentage that they have. So basically, we've already approved the money earlier, yeah. correct? It's already in the budget, and we appropriated that amount. So. Okay, that's what yep. I thought. So this is just the contract that we'll be approving for? What we've already done. Basically committed, I know. <clears throat> Rachel mentioned yesterday, it is kind of odd that we're doing this the 24th day of August mm -hmm. when we've already... I mean, you'd think it would have been fiscal to fiscal. Yeah. But and they had made the comment that normally you do it in June, but I couldn't find the 20 from 2020, but 2019 was also done in August, so I don't know. It looks like they get the first half October, yeah. second half in April, so that's... And I can do it next year, too, in June, that's fine. I, guess. I was going to say, is there a way to move this up to yeah. June next year? Mm -hmm. I guess we could do it at the same meaning is when we appropriate all of our expenses for our regular budget. Okay. That'll work. Yeah. Well, I think libraries are a good thing, and yeah. we need to support them. Yeah, I'll move to make that motion. Okay. Todd has made a motion for this item. Is there a second? I'll second that. Mark has seconded it. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Todd. Aye. Jim. Aye. Steve. Aye. Mike. Aye. Mark. Aye. Okay. Motion is carried. Uh, item 10. 
excuse me, item 11, weed complaint update. So I went after last week's meeting, I drove out there to uh, the location that the county attorney had sent a letter to the individual that we had the weed problems. I went out there Tuesday after the meeting and he mowed almost all of it. Uh, it's been taken care of. So as far as I'm concerned, the, the matter is done. That's all I had on it. So any questions about it? Good. Okay. Very good. Item 12, county home update. I actually thought that I'd have something for you today, but I don't. That it's still sitting out there. And um, I, when I visited with the contractor last week, he was going to call locates in, and he said some of it de depended on how much rain we had as far as when he actually scheduled it. I got the impression that it was going to happen this week. So we'll... We'll maybe have another county home update yeah. next week, and hopefully I can say it's gone. Gone. Yeah. All right. Hey, this is Adam. I had a question on that county home deal. Okay. Um, are they going to rip out the septic and leach field there, or no? Is what? There any reason to keep it? Well, that's <clears throat> it's not part of the price, and currently, Adam the. It's just going to be the building and the LP stand that's out there for that big tank. And what they're going to do for the septic is they're going to find the end when they're demolishing it. And then they're just going to, not the septic tank itself, but the line that runs to it. And they'll just put some sacrete over the end of that just to plug it so that it, it's plugged. And then I guess we can address that septic in the future if... Uh, if it's something that needs to happen. Okay. Is I that was just checking. It sounded like the engineers that are working on the wetland thought that um, they could utilize that area if we remove that. Personally, I don't have a problem if if you or that contractor wants to remove all that. I I'm not. I don't know what the rest of the board thinks, but would you be up to removing it yourself? Okay. What's the board think? You got a green light there? We'll go ahead. The only thing I was thinking, Adam, and I don't know the legality parts of this, but if perhaps we would decide to put some sort of shelter or maybe bathrooms out there for in the future, would could we use that? I believe the sewer system the out there is... I personally is never used out. the bathroom, but I guess that's yeah. open for discussion. I could see a shelter. Yeah. For, so you were saying that the wetlands project could actually be part of, encroach in on where the leach field is right now. So to answer Todd's question or go, go forward with that, if we ever decided to put bathrooms out there, just put a leach field in a different location that's most yeah. that's modern location or a, just, just a second Steve or just a tank. okay okay go ahead Steve I think to be within code we'd have to put in new leach field the old out there is no is no good it wouldn't be up to code oh David okay man. yeah that 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 answers my question okay. uh, I'd say if uh, conservation wants to go at it I'm I'm okay with it too. We'll see what everybody else thinks. Mark, what's your thoughts? What's <clears throat> what's the wetland going to do up there? I don't know. Uh, you just you thought that they some of the wetland would get into the well, it wouldn't be where the septic is, but it would just be where the leach field is, correct? Yeah, I think so. They just had a question about whether we were going to rip it out or not. I don't know that they're excavating there or not yet. Okay. The septic is right close to the um, the road or that back road by the uh, smokehouse. So I mean that's I think that's the septic. That's what I thought it was. So um, yeah, it must be more the leach field. I'm not sure that must run straight east of there. Yeah, I think I think they're probably talking about the leach field. Yeah. I guess I would say go ahead. You know, it's not usable anyway. So. 
Steve, what do you think? Okay. My opinion. Steve, what do you I, think? I'm not for sure what Adam's saying because I don't really get a good. All I'm saying is, is the the septic system that is out there wouldn't be legal or up for code for now, so they'd have to put in their new. And if that's what he's talking about, you know, that's go for it. Yeah, yeah. What he's saying is the the wetlands they they talked about possibly. Uh, taking some of that leach field out for what the project they're going to do and either conservation or that contractor would would do that that's what he's questioning us about yep. Yep. whatever they need to do I'm I'm good for get with getting rid of it if sure. mark you are too yep okay Adam it sounds like a consensus of the board that uh, you or that contractor can take the leach field out if you want to okay thank you guys. you bet yep Okay. Um, items of note, meetings attended. I attended a, a, well, this organization is going to disband and it's called Homeward Incorporated and it's kind of an important thing for Metro County. In 96 they were formed by eight rural electric co-ops and what they do is they, uh, they assist in uh, offering home repairs, uh, promote affordable housing with, uh, for low income, they offer home buyer assistance, they offer veterans assistance for home repair, um, they promote new construction, and it, the, the program gets used real heavily in Mitchell County. In fact, Mitchell County is one of the biggest users. There's uh, the whole state has is, is part of a program um, that that the state helps fund with grants, and some of those grants started to run dry. So then this these RECs for the last five years have decided to try to help fund it with county money. So that's where we pay our five thousand dollars to them for this. And so we've paid twenty-five thousand dollars for this program, for what they're going to do. And Mitchell County, since the inception of the program, has received back nine hundred fifty-seven thousand nine hundred twenty-five dollars. So we've received lots of money. In fact, we're one of the biggest users of it, which is a good thing. They promote counties to use it. Um, that's because a lot of uh, entities within our county, banks. I don't know who all these people are that know of, of what these people do, but um, we use it a lot. Well, anyway, the RECs has decided that they're not going to participate in one portion of this program, and that's managing uh, all of these counties that do it. They're still going to provide assistance to the counties that they are in, and Heartland is one of the RECs, so they're still going to do some things within Mitchell County, but not the full program. We have to decide sometime, it, there's still 20 this year, 2022 is the last year, 2023 it goes away. We have to decide what we're going to do next year sometime. And uh, NIACOG does offer this program. They, it's just Sir Gordo and Floyd at this time and I guess they did want to have more counties around them to participate in it so they might be eager to actually have us included with them um, I just wanted to let you know that this program I wasn't aware that this program is used so much in Metro County and it's it's used a lot it's a first come first serve basis in regards to when the funds are out the funds are out but uh, it's used widely here Sherry, do you have any comments on about any of that or the program? Or? No. Okay. You summed it up. Um, something that the MCEDC is working on, gaining more information on, is um, another program that may be able to kind of help absorb some of this. It's a private company. Um, we don't have a ton of information on it right now. Our board has asked for a lot more questions, and we'll be coming to our next meeting. Um, and I also think it would be really good to reach out to Merle at 9 yeah. and just find out 
what our costs would be. Um, and I have a meeting with Myrtle on Thursday, so I would be happy to talk to her. Sure. They didn't. They didn't know if it was still going to be the five thousand dollar contribution. It might be. I mean, we never used to do that. It might be less. It might be ten thousand dollars. That they're. I have no idea yet, but that's just something we have to explore. I'm going to send a email out to this girl's name is I believe Cheryl Reed. I think she manages a lot of the uh, program and uh, ask her who all in Mitchell County utilizes this you know, who's requesting all this money. And then I'll send an email to all of them, let them know what's going on, get a hold of Myrtle with Nyakog too, and say, you know, you're interested in us, and we'll start the process. I don't want to be September of next year, and then we're trying to figure out, well, what are we going to do? So we'll start working towards that. Any questions about any of that? So that, that helps, like the rental assistance and stuff like that. Too. Yep, That's they great. do. Yep. No. Home rep they do ho home repair assistance. So, there's a lot of different programs, different programs, but as far as assistance to rentals or assistance to homes, um, they have dollar amounts that uh, they'll offer to help with that. Um, yeah, they just offer a lot of stuff. So. I can let you read the packet too if you want. Okay. So that's all I. That's the only meeting I had. So I didn't have any this week. None for me. Uh, I had a couple. Uh, I had uh, FMC DCAT. Um, uh, that was basically we had uh, two months off. Um, they don't meet in June and July, so. Um, the other day was just kind of getting back in the swing of things. Um, they did have a little money left over in a one of their programs, which is um, kind of the substance abuse services. And so uh, our uh, D.A.R.E. program is one of them. So I reached out to uh, Rick Legru and um, they, they, I'm, to give Rick the number, to get a hold of the gal, and that's a great idea. They're they're gonna help uh, with giving Rick a little money for his dare program. So so I was excited about that. And then uh, I had a economic development meeting last night and discussed some of uh, our housing program. Um, we're hoping to move forward on that. Um, our offices and is full staffed with Sherry and and uh, Tracy's back last week, so look out, they're they're running wild. So we're ready to start moving forward on some economic development and jobs, industry, housing. We're looking into everything. So and we did uh, we toured the Lehman Center after our meeting, so that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Jobs over by uh, the, it was the old press news building, okay. and uh, a lot of informational stuff there, and I, 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 it's pretty amazing over there. So anytime you get a chance, I'd take a tour of it. It's got some of the old press news presses in there that um, they said they couldn't move, so yeah. they oh. built around them, and uh. um, <clears throat> it's it's pretty awesome. And it's and they they like to have meetings held there, and they have a kitchen, the food truck that's around our area. That's kind of his uh, where he preps a lot of food and his stuff for the trucks. So, yeah. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Um, the Lehman Center is something that really showcases all of Mitchell County, um, and so it's one thing that I foresee economic development using a lot to hold meetings um, and have catered events with, they can have outside catering, they can also have the culinary center that cater, but um, so any meetings that you would like to have, they're having to have people there because it really showcases um, the, just the history of Mitchell County and the pride here in Mitchell County that, that we do have and how we want to continue to just move forward. So. Okay, very good. Yeah, you know, this building or for an event? Um, I know that they would work with 
depending on who's coming in and, and what the use is for. Um, I, I don't know their rates and things like that. I'm not sure they even have that established. It's just more of let them know your need and they'll work something yeah. out with you. Yeah, I think it's still work in process. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I don't think they want to leave it empty. Uh, kind of right, you know. Yeah, so, you know, if you would have a meeting or something, I, I'm thinking there, they'd work with you just to, just to showcase the place. Sure. Okay. A lot of history in there. So. Steve, did you have any meetings? Yes, I did. I had a meeting. Uh, it was with to do with the NICOG RP2A. Uh, this was. The state of Iowa was presenting the road projects for the future, and basically what they were asked after was public comment. And I sat on the phone for five, ten minutes after he described the projects, and I did not hear any comments whatsoever. And I knew I was still connected because I could hear him breathing. So after that amount of time, I hung up. Anyways, I had another meeting. This was FMC Early Childhood. That was last night at 6.30. Lasted a little over an hour. And uh, it was the annual meeting. And we had comments from the chair and the vice chair. We did the financial report for the period ending July 30, 2021. And uh, we discussed our financial portion, our board member matrix, community plan update, Discussed direct services, preschool scholarships, and Head Start services for Floyd and Mitchell counties. And we discussed indirect services and preschool scholarship coordinations and CCRNR. And then we also discussed family support, Lutheran services in Iowa, and learning connections. And uh, we had a discussion. And we approved the for year 21 annual report and financial components. And then we had some provider updates. The meeting was over. So that's my two meetings. Okay, very good. Uh, public comments. Don't have much. We have two people, but they're, they're employees. So. Uh, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Steve has made the motion a second. I'll second. Todd a second.